and welcome to our virtual show and tell called Migrate, Hibernate, Tolerate. My name is Laura Askill. I'm the Ag Ed Farm Manager with Metro Parks of Butler County. And today we're going to be talking about the three choices that our animals have here in Butler County, Ohio, so they can survive the cold winter months. And those three choices are migrate, hibernate, or tolerate. Now in our video presentation, we're going to be using some steady skins, maybe some mounted animals, some furs, some puppets, pictures, and of course, our live animals. So let's get started. I sure wish migration was part of my family's travel plans this winter because it's cold outside. But what does migrate mean? It means to move from one area to another. We have some animals that migrate a short distance and others that migrate an incredibly long distance. They cross land, oceans, and to other countries. So here are some examples of birds, bats, and bugs that migrate in our state. This is a bobolink. And here we have a picture of a hoary bat. And it's not just monarch butterflies that migrate. Here is a common green darner dragonfly that migrates too. So here is the popular monarch butterfly. And it's the fourth generation called the super generation that makes the long and dangerous flight from various places in the U.S. to southern U.S. and to the country Mexico. So now we're going to pretend to be butterflies and play the migration game. Let me quickly go over the rules and help you get things set up and then you can play at home. The first thing you need to do is sign someone to be the gamekeeper. This person starts and finishes the game and calls out the temperature, whether it's going to be hot or cold. Everyone else is going to be butterflies that are migrating from point A to point B. Point A is going to be your favorite park in Butler County, Ohio, and point B is going to be a large forest in the country of Mexico. So now lay some flowers. They can be silk, plastic, paper ones that you've been colored and cut out, it doesn't matter, between point A and point B. Now the objective is for all the butterflies to migrate from point A to point B safely and to gather food along the way. Remember, butterflies are ectothermic, which means their internal body temperature is dictated by the outside temperature. So when the gamekeeper yells halt, then all the butterflies may move around quickly, flying and gathering as many flowers as possible. When the gamekeeper yells cold, then all the butterflies must drop their flowers and freeze and don't move. Have fun playing! Whew, it's time to take a breather and sit down. This is a great opportunity for us to make our cave. You can make your cave out of a box or a paper bag, and decorate it, and then put your favorite stuffed animal friend in it so they can sleep, and then we can start talking about hibernation. But once you put them to sleep, remember you have to whisper because you don't want to wake them up from hibernation. Now another choice that animals have that they don't want to migrate is that they can hibernate. Well, what does hibernate mean? It really just means to rest or to sleep. And we have two different kinds of hibernators here in Butler County, Ohio. We have the deep sleepers who really snore a lot. And we also have the napper snackers. Now why would an animal want to hibernate? The main reason for like our insects, amphibians and reptiles is because they're ectothermic, which means they're cold blooded. Do you remember what that means? We talked about it with the monarch butterflies in the migration game. That means they would freeze to death during the winter cold months. So that would be a good reason to want to hibernate. Now we do have some mammals that hibernate here. Now let's see, mammals have fur, which keeps them warm in the winter, and they are endothermic or warm blooded, which means they have chemicals in their brains, which helps to regulate their internal body temperature so it doesn't really matter what the temperature is outside. So that's not the reason for hibernating. Hmm, well, what else could there be? Aha, I think it's because of lack of food. Because in the winter time, we do not have plants and trees that produce leaves, flowers, fruits, and seeds, which some of our mammals need to eat. So if none of that is around in the winter time, they cannot be out looking for food because there isn't any food. If you have not had the opportunity to print off the words to the hibernation song, now's a great time so you can sing along. And I bet we wake up our friends who are hibernating in the caves. Are you ready? 
Now in the hibernation song, when you hear the word hibernation, if you're sitting down, you need to stand up. And if you're standing up, you need to sit down. And when you hear the word sleep, what do you do? You sleep. Are you ready? Let's go. Hibernation, time for hibernation. Hibernation, time to go to sleep. In the winter, where's the bear? Sleeping in his logger lair. Where's the bear? Logger lair. snow blizzard here in Belton County, Ohio during the winter, you are going to find lots of birds who have learned to tolerate being here. This yellow shafted flicker varies its diet depending on the season. It eats insects such as ants and beetles on the ground during the spring and the summer, and then primarily eats seeds and berries in the fall and winter. What other animals tolerate being in our parks during the winter? Do you know what animal this fur came from? A rabbit. Keep an eye out for our eastern cottontails as they hop around the snow looking for food to eat. If the weather is too bad, they will hunker down in the snow until it gets better. You can easily find their tracks after a snowfall though. Now our largest mammal that can tolerate winters in our parks is the white-tailed deer. Like the rabbit, these animals are able to adapt their diet and they insulate themselves during the winter. Mammals grow thicker fur and put on more fat when it's cold outside. Here is a tail from a white-tailed deer. Hmm. I wonder where it gets its name from. Now our life animal for today's show and tell is going to be the streamside salamander, Ambistoma barbarin. Have you ever seen a mole salamander up close? We have at least three different species that occur here in Butler County. We have this one, the streamside salamander. We also have Jefferson salamander and the spotted salamander. Now she is an amphibian. So you tell me if she migrates, hibernates, or tolerates. Well, she hibernates, of course. In appearance, she's very similar to the smallmouth salamander, and they actually used to be considered the same species until it split in 1989. Our streamside salamander occupies upland deciduous forests. And they like to burrow in first and second order headwaters that usually have a high abundance of limestone and exposed bedrock. So yes, this is a fairly small niche and it's important to protect this special habitat. They are listed as near threatened by the IUCN red list and that's because of the small area of occurrence as well as shrinking or degraded habitat quality in different parts of the state. Our streamside salamander leads a semi-aquatic life cycle the adults breed and deposit eggs in shallow ephemeral streams and sometimes in adjacent pools. And it's usually the males that will arrive to the breeding sites before the females. And the eggs are internally fertilized. When the female picks up the spermatophores that are previously deposited by the males on submerged undersides of flat stream bed rocks. Females will pick up these spermatophores inside their cloacas fertilize the eggs, and then will deposit the eggs onto submerged rock surfaces. These eggs will hatch and the larva will live in the clean streams. So notice the perfect camouflage colors, especially to be in streams. They are mottled gray and tan, have a very small head and mouth, and there's about 15 coastal grooves along the side. So what do you think she eats? 
She preys on lots of small animals that live in the water, like larvae and isopods, different stream macroinvertebrates. And here at Metro Parks of Butler County, we feed our salamander waxworms and other small invertebrates. Now, due to its semi-aquatic life cycle, the streamside salamander does have a mix of different predators too. While there are larvae in the water, there's fish and flatworms to eat them, and then water snakes, crayfish, and birds will try to eat them as an adult. So in this virtual show and tell, we have covered animals that either migrate, hibernate, or tolerate here at Metro Parks of Butler County. Thanks for joining us. And our next show and tell is gonna be on Thursday, January 21st at 10 o'clock. And its title is Let's Take a Spin. Now don't worry if you can't join us at that time, all of our programs are posted on our website, which is yourmetroparks.net and go to log off, shut down, get outside. Thank you everyone.